The Jesus story, including the crucifixion, is almost entirely outside of history. It doesn't sit in the clear light of history, the clear light of day. It's occulted, it's hidden. It's not visible, it's not there. Despite all of the documentation of ancient Rome, the empire, various vassal states, various trading nations, much of the information has been lost over time. However, we can look back and what we do find are a great many things, including things as simple as people who traded, trading merchants, local histories, knowledge of Roman emperors and local leaders, regional governors, military changes, movements of military forces, civilian changes, starvation, bad crops, etc. We have a lot of information about the ancient world, including in the actual year when supposedly Jesus died. Despite all of this, we don't find any reference to Jesus or any person akin to Jesus, a.k.a. Yeshua, apart from a very suspect and clearly edited history that was supposedly written by Josephus, a Jewish Roman historian who wrote the history of the Jewish people at that time, in that period. So you have a suspect historical link, one which isn't really remarkable, and yet you'd expect so much more, considering around the time of Jesus' death and resurrection, you had the graves of Jerusalem open up, and the people who were in them were resurrected to full health, and they walked around and greeted people they knew. That's the claim. But of course, no one wrote it down. And you'd think a story like that would carry like wildfire. It's not like zombies. It's not a zombie apocalypse. It's people who are normal people who died in years past, suddenly back, alive, regenerated, and walking around the streets and meeting people. Apart from a population crisis, which by the way would be written down, there would also be a sudden increase in the amount of taxation collected by the Roman Empire in that region. Because suddenly people are back, they're finding work, they're paying tax, and as a result, well, you end up with civilization moving forward as usual. Except with more people. You find no evidence of this. You find no changes with foreigners who would have been in Judea. Not just the Romans, but also traders from Egypt, from the Middle East in terms of Arabia in terms of Persia, in terms of Assyria, and what is now Turkey. So various regions that would have interacted, would have traded through that region, as they pass between population centre and population centre, you find no evidence of merchants realising, oh, hang on, there's a bunch of dead people walking around. Or, previously, who were dead people. People in their burial robes. You find no evidence of that. You find no reason to believe that any, any such thing happened. Anything akin to it happened. How could such a thing happen with people, well, ignoring it, not documenting it? There was no resurrection. Not of those people in Jerusalem. Not even of Lazarus. And not of Jesus Christ. The story isn't consistent. The story of, well, the mystical claims, all of the mystical claims in the Bible, are not played out or recorded, depicted in any way, in the actual history. What does that tell you? Plus, many of the stories, they are clearly derived from surrounding cultures. Whether it's being born from a virgin, whether it's being without sin, being the Son of God, having so many disciples, many of these themes, including the idea of being killed on a cross, crucified, well, that is also played out as a theme with some of these messianic dreams of surrounding cultures. It's a massively plagiarised idea. There's no originality to it. It's unbelievable. It's not historical. And you may well be able to say, well, it could have happened. It may have happened. Perhaps we don't know. So in that respect, you can say, well, there's a potential. There's a possibility. There is a chance just as there is with any number of alternative versions of history, but it seems to be that the 
major stories of the Bible, especially with the Gospels, are basically reverse engineered stories to fill in the gap, fill in the history for early Christians who realized in their first couple of centuries of existence that they needed to have some kind of backstory. And also they had stories, they had legends and myths, which were very often confused with surrounding cultures, especially when they're being write, written down in Greek. They were confused and they were put together, very often put together in a very poor fashion, with very poor selection, and without any reason to simply say, well, we don't know. So they would claim that certain things happened in sequence, in the clear light of history, even though, at best, some of the stories that may have gone back to Yeshua in Judea may well have simply have been passed on and changed through oral tradition of travelling people. So in that respect, why on earth should you believe a word? I hear a spirit really loud. Where are you going? Of course! The man 